The death toll is already at 300 and climbing in Mexico as officials are trying to respond as fast as they can to remove rubble to find survivors. A lot of the communications are down within Mexico. And as for Lawrence, a Spanish professor here, Rafael Acosto, has family down in Mexico City. He said that he's concerned right now because he's not able to have contact with them. From what I know, my family is fine. Uh, one of them will have to sleep at somebody else's house because they need an engineer to check that the building is, is fine. And that at the present has a lower priority over getting people out of the buildings that fell. With Mexico just coming off an 8.1 earthquake a week earlier, Mexican officials are scrambling to find solutions to this problem. Response workers are working as fast as they can, trying to save as many lives as possible. The 7.1 earthquake did quite a bit of damage to Mexico City, as 52 buildings are collapsed or collapsing. Of that 300 that were pronounced dead, 21 were school children found in the debris of Enrique Rebsamen School in Mexico City's Copa District. Mexican citizens grew wary as they were waiting for their loved ones. When the storm clouds started flowing over to Mexican City, protests began with signs that said, They are still alive. Don't kill them. And we don't want machines. Fearing that if machines are used, more rubble could collapse on the people inside. The protests started off when there were rumors of the military potentially using bulldozers to make the removal of the rubble easier. That was unlikely to have survivors. Even though there was an 8.1 magnitude earthquake that happened in Mexico earlier this month, this 7.1 magnitude is the deadliest earthquake that Mexico has seen in a generation. Reporting live from Lawrence, Zach Fisher, KUJH News.